Top 20 MEP Engineering Interview Questions and Answers. MEP Engineering Interviews test your expertise in mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems within construction projects. These questions will help you demonstrate your technical knowledge, problem-solving skills, and understanding of complex engineering systems. 1. What does MEP stand for in construction? MEP stand for Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing. It represents the three essential disciplines involved in building design and construction. MEP engineers are responsible for designing, implementing, and maintaining these systems to ensure safety, efficiency, and functionality. They work collaboratively with architects and civil engineers to create coordinated, sustainable designs that comply with building codes. Effective MEP integration enhances energy efficiency, building performance, and occupant comfort. Two, what are the major components of an HVAC system? The major components of an HVAC system include heating units, cooling units, ventilation systems, filters, ducts, and thermostats. These elements work together to regulate indoor temperature and air quality. HVAC systems maintain thermal comfort and control humidity levels in buildings. MEP engineers design and size these systems based on load calculations, ensuring energy efficiency, performance reliability, and occupant safety, while following industry standards like ASHRAE and local building codes. 3. How do you perform load calculations in HVAC design? Load calculations determine the heating and cooling requirements of a building. Engineers use tools like HAP or carrier software to analyze building orientation, materials, insulation, occupancy, and climate. The process involves calculating sensible and latent heat loads to size HVAC systems accurately. Proper load calculation ensures energy efficiency, cost effectiveness, and optimal comfort. Oversized or undersized systems can lead to inefficiency, discomfort, and higher operational costs in the long term. For what is the purpose of a single line diagram, SLD? A single line diagram, SLD, is a simplified representation of an electrical system showing power flow paths, components, and interconnections. It illustrates circuit breakers, transformers, cables, and loads. SLDS help engineers and technicians understand system layout, conduct load analysis, and plan maintenance or fault isolation. It's essential for ensuring safety, compliance, and efficient troubleshooting during installation and operation, making a critical document in electrical system design and management. 5. How do you ensure coordination between MEP services? Coordination between MEP services is achieved through building information modeling BIM, tools like Revit. Engineers integrate 3D models of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems to detect clashes before installation. Regular interdisciplinary meetings, coordinated layouts, and design reviews help resolve conflicts. Proper coordination ensures efficient use of space, cost control, and seamless construction progress. It prevents rework, delays, and ensures that all systems function harmoniously within architectural constraints. 6. What is the difference between earthing and grounding? Earthing and grounding are often used interchangeably but differ slightly. Earthing connects non-current carrying parts of equipment to the earth to prevent electric shock. Grounding connects the current carrying neutral part of the system to stabilize voltage and provide a return path during faults. Both ensure electrical safety, equipment protection, and system stability. Proper grounding design follows standards like IEC or NEC for effective fault current dissipation and personnel safety. 7. What is the role of a plumbing engineer in MEP design? A plumbing engineer designs systems for water supply, drainage, sewage, and stormwater management. They ensure proper water pressure, pipe sizing, material selection, and code compliance. Plumbing design involves calculating fixture loads, determining vent systems, and integrating with HVAC and electrical layouts. They also focus on sustainable water use, leak prevention, and maintenance accessibility. Their designs ensure hygiene, safety, and efficient water management in residential, commercial, and industrial facilities. 8. What is static pressure in HVAC systems? Static pressure is a resistance to airflow within ducts and components of an HVAC system. It's measured in inches of water column, in WC. Engineers calculate static pressure to select appropriate fans, ducts, and filters. 
High static pressure can reduce airflow and system efficiency, while low pressure may indicate leakage or undersized equipment. Balancing static pressure ensures efficient operation, comfort, and prolonged system life while maintaining design airflow rates. 9. What is power factor and why is it important? Power factor measures the efficiency of electrical power usage, defined as the ratio of real power to apparent power. A power factor close to 1 indicates efficient energy use. Low power factor causes energy losses and higher utility bills. MEP engineers correct it using capacitor banks or synchronous condensers. Maintaining optimal power factor improves system reliability, reduces transformer losses, and enhances electrical distribution efficiency, benefiting both performance and cost management. 10. What is a ducting system and its types? A ducting system distributes air throughout an HVAC system. Common types include rectangular, circular, and flexible ducts. Material options include galvanized steel, aluminum, and fabric. Duct design considers air velocity, pressure loss, and noise levels. Proper duct sizing minimizes energy consumption and ensures balanced airflow. Insulation prevents condensation and energy loss. MEP engineers carefully design ductwork layouts to achieve comfort, efficiency, and compliance with ASHRAE and SMACNA standards. 11. How do you prevent water hammer in plumbing systems? Water hammer occurs when fast-moving water suddenly stops or changes direction, creating shock waves. To prevent it, engineers use air chambers, water hammer arresters, and slow closing valves. Proper pipe sizing and maintaining steady flow also reduce risks. Pressure reducing valves help manage high pressure zones. Preventing water hammer protects plumbing fixtures, prevents leaks, and extends system life, ensuring smooth operation and user comfort within the plumbing network. 12. What are the common electrical distribution systems used in buildings? Common electrical distribution systems include single phase, three phase, radial, ring main, and bus bar systems. Three-phase systems are used in large buildings for efficient power transmission. Radial systems are simple but less reliable, while ring mains provide redundancy. Bus bars distribute power efficiently within switchgear panels. MEP engineers choose configurations based on load requirements, safety, and reliability. Proper system design ensures balanced loads, voltage stability, and minimal power losses throughout the building. 13. How is energy efficiency achieved? in MEP design. Energy efficiency is achieved by integrating sustainable technologies like LED lighting, efficient HVAC units, variable frequency drives, VFDS, and renewable energy sources. Engineers use energy modeling software to optimize system performance. Proper insulation, zoning, and occupancy sensors also enhance efficiency. Selecting right size equipment and implementing automation systems reduce wastage. Energy-efficient MEP designs minimize operational costs, meet green building standards like LED, and contribute to environmental sustainability and long-term savings. 14. What is the importance of building information modeling BIM in MEP engineering? BIM is crucial in MEP engineering for integrating all systems into a unified 3D model. It helps identify clashes, coordinate disciplines, and improve accuracy. BIM supports design visualization, cost estimation, and project scheduling. It enhances collaboration between architects, engineers, and contractors, minimizing errors during construction. Through BIM, MEP engineers can simulate performance, track assets, and ensure maintenance efficiency, ultimately leading to higher project quality and reduced rework. 15. What is a transformer and its function in MEP systems? A transformer transfers electrical energy between circuits through electromagnetic induction. It steps up or steps down voltage levels based on system requirements. In MEP systems, transformers ensure safe voltage distribution, minimize losses, and protect electrical equipment. They are crucial in power distribution networks for both commercial and industrial facilities. Proper transformer selection and maintenance improve efficiency, reliability, and ensure compliance with electrical codes and safety regulations. 16. What is a firefighting system in MEP design? A firefighting system protects buildings and occupants from fire hazards. It includes sprinklers, fire pumps, hydrants, extinguishers, and alarm systems. 
MEP engineers design these systems according to NFPA standards and local codes. They ensure proper water supply, pressure, and coverage throughout the building. Integration with electrical and mechanical systems enhances safety. Well-designed firefighting systems minimize property damage, save lives, and ensure compliance with fire safety regulations. 17. How do you determine cable sizing in electrical design? Cable sizing depends on current carrying capacity, voltage drop, and short circuit ratings. Engineers calculate load requirements, distance, and environmental conditions to select appropriate cable sizes. Factors like insulation type, grouping, and ambient temperature are considered. Proper sizing ensures safety, prevents overheating, and maintains voltage stability. Using standards such as IEC or NEC guarantees compliance. Accurate cable sizing enhances performance, efficiency, and longevity of electrical distribution systems within MEP projects. 18. What are the common types of pumps used in MEP systems? Common pumps in MEP systems include centrifugal, submersible, booster, and diaphragm pumps. Centrifugal pumps handle HVAC and water supply systems, while booster pumps maintain pressure. Submersible pumps are used for drainage and sewage applications. Selection depends on flow rate head and fluid type. Proper pump design ensures energy efficiency, reliability, and low maintenance. Pumps play a crucial role in fluid transport and maintaining continuous system operations in buildings. 19. What is the purpose of testing and commissioning in MEP projects? Testing and commissioning verify that all MEP systems function as designed. It involves inspection, calibration, performance testing, and documentation. Engineers test HVAC, electrical, and plumbing systems for safety, reliability, and efficiency. Proper commissioning ensures compliance with design specifications, building codes, and client requirements. It identifies potential issues before handover, reducing operational risks. Successful commissioning leads to optimized performance, longer equipment life, and improved building management efficiency. 20. How do you handle MEP design changes during construction? Handling MEP design changes involves identifying the reason, assessing impacts, and updating drawings accordingly. Engineers coordinate with all stakeholders to ensure revisions are feasible and compliant. BIM tools assist in real-time updates and clash detection. Proper documentation and change approvals prevent conflicts and delays. Effective communication and version control ensure all teams follow updated designs, maintaining construction quality, project timeline, and budget integrity. Mastering these MEP engineering interview questions demonstrates your technical expertise and problem-solving ability. Understanding core concepts ensures you stand out, securing success in your career as an MEP professional.